In this video, you will learn how to open and upload design files from another CAD software, capture design history, use the direct editing tools to modify the imported components, and control the imported assemblies. I'll start with a quick introduction to these topics. Imported files will be saved into the current project and folder. To import an individual file, use the Open tool on the File menu. To import an individual or multiple files in one operation, go to the Data panel and then click on Upload. Note that imported CAD files do not contain features and the file's design history is disabled. To capture design history and enable the timeline, go in the browser and right-click on the top-level file name. From the menu, click Capture Design History. The timeline will appear at the bottom of the canvas and add features as needed. You can edit imported components by using the direct editing tools. To do so, select the desired faces, and then you can either delete, move, rotate, or change the size of the selected face or faces. When uploading an assembly, ensure that all components that make up that assembly are uploaded. When an assembly is uploaded, the reference components are created as local components in the imported assembly. Note that the assembly constraints are not imported, but you can position the components by either adding assembly joints, or you can create a rigid group. Rigid group locks all the selected components in their current location. In a rigid group, you can select as many components as you require. To learn more about working with assemblies inside of Fusion 360, please view the assembly modeling process video. Now inside of Fusion 360, I'll start by opening a part file that was designed in Autodesk Inventor. I'm gonna go up here under the file menu, and then click on Open. I'm going to open the file from my hard drive by coming down here and clicking on Open from my computer. And from my list, I'm going to select the vertical plate IPT file and click Open. The file will open, and this will take about a minute. After this process is done, I'm just going to click on Open. Currently, the file is just open. So the next thing I'm going to do is save the file. I'm going to come up here in the application bar and click on Save. If needed, you could change the file name, then verify the location where the file will be saved, and then click on Save. When you open up a component file from another CAD software, there are no features, hence there is no timeline displayed. However, you can turn on the history, so actions done from this point forward will be captured. To do this, I'm going to move my cursor up here in the browser, and I'm going to right-click on the top-level file name, and then from the bottom of the menu, I'm going to click Capture Design History. And notice that the timeline now appears at the bottom of the canvas. Even though there are no features on this component, you can use Fusion 360's direct editing tools to modify this component. I'm going to start by zooming up here on the top right. I'm going to change my viewpoint just a little bit. To start, I want to remove this front protrusion and the slot. I'm going to do so by drawing a window around this area. With those faces selected, I can delete them by either doing a right mouse click and click Delete from the menu or press Delete on the keyboard. Now I'll change my viewpoint so I can see the back of the plate. What I want to do next is move these two counter bore holes. I can do this by simply selecting on the six faces that make up these two counter bore holes. After the faces are selected, I'm going to do right mouse click and from the menu, click Move Copy. Now I'm going to select the arrow that will define the direction that I want to move these holes. I'm going to click on the X direction and pull it out. And then I can enter in a value, let's say 30 millimeters. The next thing I want to do is extend this back protrusion. To do this, I'm going to select on that face. And then I'm going to do a right mouse click. And from the menu, I'm going to use the Press Pull tool. The Press Pull tool is similar to the Move tool. As you can see, I can just select on the arrow and I can pull it up. I'm going to give a value here of say 25 millimeters. Next, I'll zoom back a little bit. If needed, you can change the height of selected faces to match the height of an existing face. To demonstrate this, I'm going to first select this top horizontal face, hold down the control key, select this other face, then right mouse click and click press pull from the menu. Then click and drag on the arrow. And you can see that both faces move simultaneously. To match the height of the back protrusion, all I need to do is select on that top face and then click OK. Now I'll change my viewpoint to the front view and to the left view, and you can see that the protrusions are exactly the same. 
Note that you can also use the Press Pull tool to change the radius of circular faces. You can also add new features to this component. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up under the Create menu, and I'm going to place in a hole by starting the Hole tool. Then I'm going to select on the planar face. Then I'll locate this hole by selecting on an edge, typing in a value, and then selecting a second edge and typing in a value. Then in the dialog box, I'm going to change the extents to all and create the feature by clicking OK. Notice all the operations I did are tracked here in the timeline. You can edit these features by double clicking on them or right click and click Edit Feature from the menu. Here I'm going to change the diameter of the hole and click OK. The last thing I want to do is save the file. Since this file was previously saved, I can give this version a description. I'm going to change the description here to Added Features, then go ahead and click OK. And then I'll close this file. Now I'll upload an Autodesk Inventor assembly and its reference files. I'll start by displaying the data panel. Then I'll click on Upload. In the Upload dialog box, you can drag files into this area here. Or to select on the desired files, click on Select Files. Then navigate to where the files are located and then select them. Since this is an assembly file with reference components, I'm going to select all the components that make up this assembly and the assembly file and then click on Open. Now in the Upload dialog box, verify the location where these files will be saved and then click on Upload. This process will take about a minute. Now that the upload process is complete, I'm going to go ahead and click on Close. The assembly has been saved into my project. I'm going to go ahead and open it up from the data panel by double clicking on it. I'll close the data panel. Notice in the browser that all of the components have been saved as local components in this assembly. To turn the history for this assembly on, I'll move my cursor up into the browser and right click on the top level file name. And from the bottom of the menu, click on Capture Design History. When an assembly is imported from another CAD software into Fusion 360, the assembly constraints do not come over. As you can see, I can click and drag and move these components away from each other. I'm going to revert them back to their previous positions. At this point, you can add assembly joints between these components. Or if the components will be fixed together, you can create a rigid group. To create a rigid group, either select all the components in the canvas, or you can do it from the browser. I'll select the first component in the browser, hold down the Shift key, and then select the last component, and then right click. And from the menu, click Rigid Group, and then click OK. Now when I click and drag on one of the components, you'll see that they all move together because they're a rigid group. To learn more about working with assemblies inside of Fusion 360, please view the assembly modeling process video. And this completes this video on how to work with design files from another CAD software. Thanks for watching.